Callaloo is a vegetable staple in the diet of many Jamaicans and it provides a rich source of vitamins and minerals. Cultivation of the crop, once limited to backyard gardening locally, has evolved over the years to become an important commodity supplying both the local and export markets. The crop, though lucrative, is however plagued by many leaf-eating pests such as beetles, leaf hoppers, mites and worms, which are Lepidoptera insects found by entomologists to be the main culprits. High populations of the pests, especially during the hot months, adversely affect a crop's marketability and can even wipe it out. Most farmers have been relying heavily on chemical pesticides to protect their crops from these pests. But while this practice helps to control the pest population, it brings about problems of its own. Pests sometimes become resistant to the pesticides being used, especially when they are used frequently. These pesticides also cause environmental contamination and pose a health risk to users and consumers of the treated crops. Another problem is that higher than acceptable pesticide residue levels found on Callaloo have led to the rejection of shipments of the exported produce. So farmers have been suffering in this battle to control pests on their Callaloo. Nevertheless, they are now seeing where they can effectively protect the crop from pests. This new approach is based on basic principles of Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. One important thought is that if pests have no access, they can do no damage. Applying IPM principles using a combination of biological, cultural, mechanical and minimal chemical in the research, the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, CADI, with the support from the USAID and the Ministry of Agriculture, developed a strategy to reduce pest damage and pesticide use on Callaloo. In Jamaica, the IPM Chris has had has been in has been working in three commodities and these are sweet potato, callaloo, and you'll hear more about the callaloo work, hot pepper. And these were chosen on the basis that they are non-traditional export crops to the USA on which the benefits of IPM could be readily demonstrated. The IPM CRISP project through sustained research efforts for over 12 years has been able to obtain economically important results which satisfies the stated objectives and more specifically improve the quality of the product the the quality, the quality of the Kalaloo, so that the product could again be exported under the USDA's preclearance program. The research has shown that growing Kalaloo under mesh barriers, which allow at least 70% light penetration, has helped to keep out major pests, resulting in 90 to 100% marketable yields of pesticide-free Kalaloo. This method of exclusion in pest management can be applied on a commercial scale and is welcome news for many Callaloo farmers. Excluding the main pests of Callaloo, you would need to have a suitable physical barrier. And so the first thing we did was look at what fabric would be suitable for Callaloo. And a suitable fabric would allow the crop to grow as optimally as it would if it were not covered. So we had to look at shade factors. We had to look at um, mesh size because the mesh size would determine whether or not you're able to keep the pests of interest out. The benefits of exclusion was demonstrated to farmers through a field day held on Leroy Delihay's farm, cited as a model for this method of pest control in the major Callaloo growing area of St. Catherine. That material you are seeing out there, it's not a shade house fabric. It was a well-researched, selected, 30% microfilament polypropylene nylon mesh, which we chose from an album of many, okay, to meet all of those criteria. Structural outlay was selected based on material durability and cost effectiveness. In building structures such as these, consideration was given to the adverse weather conditions that affect the region on a seasonal basis. 
A collapsibility system is an integral part of the setup. The collapsibility here is aided by the cable system and a threaded bolt that you can just screw out a nut, push the bolt out and the whole thing just falls. We actually had to collapse the structure for Gustav and we collapsed it in about three hours. I'd say four of us working. Collapsed it in about three hours and we put it up back in one hour, four of us. So um, please take some time to look at what it looks like collapsed. We moved nothing out of the field. Everything stayed here and was just tied down. The use of exclusion for pest management was validated and showed the potential to give full crop protection against major pest species in Kalaloo without the use of pesticides. It was tried successfully on station, on small plots on farms over the years, and it was so, found to be so successful that we, the, the, when the funding from IPM Chris sort of dwindled away, the ministry took it up at that point and decided let's, uh, let's put some money into this to push it forward to the point we are today where we are showing its commercial viability by using the technology in fairly large plots. The Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Christopher Tufton, said the partnership in this important research work was commendable, not only because it's successful, but because it fits into the government's policy to engage in new technology in order to make the agricultural sector competitive. He wants the use of the exclusion cage in integrated pest management to evolve from its current stage of on-farm validation and demonstration to become an integral food safety tool for farmers across the island. We have finance, uh, financing available in the ministry. We have announced very low cost money to work with farmers. And this is a, a projects of this kind, I believe, are worth supporting. So we now need to move the process to the next phase. With techniques such as the exclusion system, the agricultural sector with its key components, people, land and opportunity, stand more empowered to overcome the challenges facing Jamaica's food security and food safety.